Hello. In this movie, we will show or demonstrate how to find a transfer function for a closed loop controlled system in its entirety. So this means a transfer function that relates the output of our control loop, which we call Z of T, to the inputs reference of T and disturbance of T. In order to do so, we need two basic properties of uh, transfer functions that I will explain shortly uh, on this first page. The first property, activate my pen, the first property is that when we have a system that consists of a cascade, a series of two subsystems, each having their own transfer function T1 and T2, that then we can state that the overall transfer function, let's say of this global system, is equal to the product of both transfer functions. That seems pretty logical, but remember that it's only because we have transformed everything to the Laplace domain that we can make it that simple, because if the blocks are modeled by differential equations, we can, of course, not just multiply them. So, in other words, when we call the input delta P and the output delta Q, then we know that the Laplace transform of delta Q, which we denote by Q delta, over the Laplace transform of P, delta P, which we denote by P delta, equals the product of both transfer functions. When we have a parallel setup of two transfer functions, T1 and T2, we can also write a very simple formula to relate the output to the inputs. I have chosen two different inputs here, so we have a subsystem T1 with an input delta P1 and a subsystem T2 with an input delta P2. Then, of course, again, the Laplace transform of my output will be the sum of the Laplace transform of this signal and the Laplace transform of that signal. And this signal is, of course, this transfer function times the Laplace transform of this signal. So we obtain, in the end, T1 times the Laplace transform of our first input plus T2 times the Laplace transform of our second input. If both inputs are the same, then, of course, we would just obtain one transfer function, T1 plus T2, from P to Q. Okay, using these properties, we can now try to find a transfer function that relates our controlled output, delta Z, to the inputs delta R and delta D. Indeed, using the second property, we can state here at the end that the Laplace transform of our output signal will be equal to the sum of T P D times the Laplace transform of the disturbance plus T P U. Let's erase for a second, that's not what I wanted. Plus T P U times the Laplace transform of delta U T. Notice that I have two Laplace transforms or two transfer functions for my process, one that relates the output of my process to the disturbance, one that relates the output of my process to the input, the manipulated input. And notice also that I have here added transfer functions for the sensor and the actuator, which we will often assume to be ideal and equal to one in our examples, but of course in reality they will have dynamics and they will have a transfer function. And I have a transfer function of my controller. We have uh, up till now only talked about the P controller. In that case, this transfer function is, of course, just the control gain, so a constant. But in the near future, of course, we will see a lot of different controllers that really have transfer functions that are, fu are a function of S. So here, in general, the controller is, um, is given as a transfer function TC. So, and now we can use the first property to write out this term in function, in function of what happens here. So, we see that we can 
write our formula by rewriting u delta as the product of the transfer function of the actuator and the transfer function of the controller times the Laplace transform of the error, but the error is just the difference between the reference and the, out the measured output y, so I can write this as the difference between the trans Laplace transform of my reference minus the Laplace transform of the measured output. And of course, here I see that the Laplace transform of my measured output is just equal to the, Laplace tr the transfer function of the sensor times the Laplace transform of my controlled output. So I can rewrite this again as the term in the disturbance plus oh, times, let's erase. S here, but that doesn't really matter, times the actuator times the controller, and I will split up. This is the term in the reference, minus, and then again I have TPU times T actuator times T controller, and I now add this for Y, T sensor times Z. Now I can, let's say, throw this term in Z to the left-hand side. Let's create a bit of space. And then I obtain 1 from here plus all this, which I throw over there, T, P, U, times the transfer function of the actuator, times the transfer function of the controller, times the transfer function of the sensor. This is the term in my controlled output. And then here I see that I have, of course, one part that relates to the disturbance input. And one part now that relates to my reference input the actuator, the controller reference. And now, when I divide everything by this term, I get Z delta again over here, and I get two transfer functions now for my control system. Here I see a transfer function that relates my disturbance input, and I omit the S's for a second, the disturbance with my output, and I have a transfer function that relates the reference to my control output. So this is the transfer function that gives me the relationship between output and changing disturbance, in other words, for the control problem. And this transfer function is the transfer function that relates the reference to my controlled output, in other words, is the transfer function related to the servo problem. We will denote this by T closed loop, CL, from D to Z. And this is the closed loop transfer function from O, erase, not from D, but from closed loop from R to Z. Why do we write it like this? Because, of course, we need to distinguish between D and R, but 
We can also find transfer functions to the measured output y, and then of course this will be a y. But that's not for now, uh, that's only a very small change where we just have to multiply the transfer functions with the transfer function of the sensor. Um, that's not really important right now. So this is a important, an important result because these are the transfer functions that tell us how the closed loop will behave dynamically for the servo and the control problem. Notice that since they are both uh, for the same control system, that they have the same denominator, and that this denominator will determine the poles of our control loop. In other words, a lot of the dynamics of our control loop will be determined by the poles of these transfer functions, and they can be found by stating that this equation of the denominator is equals zero. That's called the characteristic equation. We come back to that in class. The numerators, of course, are a bit different. This is the numerator that relates the disturbance to the output. It just consists of the transfer function of the process uh, for the disturbance. Uh, here we have a numerator that relates, that is in the transfer function that relates the reference to the output. And there we see a product of the process transfer function for the manipulated input, the actuator transfer function, and the control transfer function. How do we use these things? Let's do or make an easy example. So here I repeated both formulas. Here I you see the closed loop transfer function from R to Z. Here you see the closed loop transfer function from D to Z. I hope they are clear. Enough. Suppose now that we assume our sensor and our actuator to be ideal just make them equal to 1. And let's try to find the results that we have found in the previous chapter for a first-order system controlled with a P-controller. So there we had a first-order system, meaning that we had a transfer function from U to Z, uh, which was given by some gain KPU over uh, tau S plus 1. And we had a transfer function from D to Z, which was given by a possibly different gain, KPD, but we used the same uh, time constant, tau S plus 1. And then we added a P controller, meaning that the transfer function from delta error to delta uh, U equals the control gain, KC. If we now apply this to find the transfer functions, when I use first the one from R to Z, so for the servo problem, I find that I have to multiply the controller's transfer function with the actuator transfer function, which is just one and drops out, with the process transfer function, which is KPU over tau S plus one, and then I have to divide by one, plus the product of the sensor and the actuator, they drop out. So I uh, product of what remains is the controller, KC, times the transfer function of the process from U to Z. And now I multiply numerator and denominator by tau S plus 1 to obtain KC, KPU over tau S plus 1 plus K, C, K, P, U. And if I look now at this transfer function, which is the transfer function that relates a change in reference to what happens with my output, I find that this has a gain, a DC gain, which I find by stating that S equals 0, of K, C, K, P, U over 1 plus K, C, K, P, U. And this is exactly the result we found in the previous chapter when we did everything, when we worked out everything with differential equations. This is the closed loop gain for the servo problem. And I also can find the closed loop time constant. To, do, to find this closed loop time constant, I need a standard form, meaning that my constant term here should be 1. So I divide everything by 1 plus Kc 
KPU and I find a closed loop time constant of tau over 1 plus KC KPU, which is again exactly what we found in chapter 2. Notice again the steady state error that will be introduced if we start from a perfect equilibrium where the output is equal to the reference. We notice that this closed loop uh, gain for the server problem is not equal to 1 and hence we will introduce a steady state error when the reference changes. But notice also again that the, this is not very good tall. Now it's completely going wrong so let's also notice again that the closed loop time constant uh, can be made smaller by increasing Kc and also the steady state error can be made smaller by increasing Kc. This is exactly the result we found in chapter 2. Now it's up to you to check whether also the closed loop uh, transfer function of the Control problem is giving the same result as in chapter 2 and maybe I can also give a small example or exercise that you can try uh, for instance suppose we have a process transfer function of second order with complex conjugate poles. This means that when we apply a step to this process we have oscillations. Let's assume there's no disturbance for now and we only consider the servo problem. Question now is if I introduce a proportional controller Kc with ideal actuator and sensor can I make the control loop, or first calculate the closed loop transfer function from R to Z. And can you choose KC such that the control loop has real poles. In other words, such that when you apply a step to the reference that you don't see the oscillations that are typically occurring in this process at the output of the control loop. That's something you can try as well. See you in class.